Thank you, Congressman Nadler, a neighbor and friend of mine for a long time, uh, a stalwart of progressive causes uh, in New York, and and uh, and now here with you. I have been very pleased to be able to meet with many of you earlier today, and uh, I've, it's been a good day uh, meeting with some of my federal counterparts down here to the co-chairs, Mr. Ellison, Mr. Gohova. Thank you very much for having me here. Thank you for your leadership for all of you. Um, fighting on behalf of progressive causes and refusing to give up to the narrative of uh, the conservative uh, policies that to me were proven to be unsound by the bubble and the crash of the housing markets and yet uh, uh, still have their advocates in these halls. I thank you for fighting the fight in so many different levels every day. Um, and I, I have to say that uh, my goal when I took office a little over a year ago as Attorney General, um, the theme that permeates our office is the idea that there has to be one set of rules for everyone. There is no one that's above the law and no one who's, who is too humble to deserve the protections of the law. I'm a big believer that the core of the American ideal is equal justice under law and that we have strayed from that ideal in recent years. Um, I have spent a lot of time in the last year investigating uh, things related to the mortgage foreclosure crisis and, and most centrally to the conduct that created the housing bubble in the first place that brought about the crisis because this didn't just happen. This didn't, wasn't caused by sunspots or global warming or a tidal wave. This is a man-made catastrophe caused by reckless deregulation and just plain greed. Um, when I came into office, uh, I found that uh, all of the, pretty much all of the state attorneys general and a lot of federal agencies were working on negotiating a settlement with five of the largest mortgage servicers. Um, I did not think at that time that the settlement that was on the table was acceptable, principally for the reason that uh, uh, I didn't want any claims released that hadn't been fully investigated. And I've been very concerned as someone who has, Congressman Nadler noted, I spent 15 years in private practice. I represented a lot of major financial services firms. I know a lot of people on Wall Street, friends and family, and uh, uh, I know that these guys were trying to get as broad a release as they possibly could. And my position was, if you're going to settle a case that's about robo-signing or some abuses in the foreclosure process, okay. But you can't give up the claims for the bundling of mortgages, for the sale of mortgage-backed securities, for the deceptive practices in, in getting investors and homeowners into this cycle that went way beyond where a natural market would have gone. I know some folks on the other side like to say they are believers in the market. This is a market that was artificially driven up. Housing prices went up higher than they should have gone. and we know a lot about how it happened. The final settlement that was resolved, uh, that was agreed to earlier this year, uh, had significantly um, narrower releases than it had initially been proposed. That is not because my uh, advocacy uh, became more effective as the year went on. That's because as 2011 uh, moved on into the fall and the winter, a lot of other folks, including people here and members of the, the Progressive Caucus were very important in this. Labor unions like the AFL-CIO, SCIU, HERE, uh, UNITE, uh, activist groups, the NAACP, La Raza, and many other organizations, housing organizations, united to say we want a full investigation, not just of what you're doing in foreclosures, but how did we get so many people underwater in the first place? What happened to our markets? What caused the crash? Uh, there was a similar investigation after the crash in 1929, and a lot of people expressed the interest that uh, a thorough investigation in all aspects of it was needed. So the foreclosure settlement, uh, which does obtain relief, and I'm very pleased with the fact that in New York in particular, uh, we are getting uh, some principal reductions and uh, rate adjustments for people, most significantly in New York, where we have pretty good laws to protect you from wrongful foreclosure. Um, we have been able to preserve and expand housing counseling and legal services because to me, again, as uh, someone committed to the idea of equal justice under law, there is no equal justice under law if you're going in to fight a bank over foreclosure and you don't have a lawyer. I mean, I, I mean, the housing counselors who are experts, whether they're lawyers or not, critically important. And as uh, uh, Congressman Grohova was saying, sometimes you can get justice for people. We've had many, many cases in which 
people were on the edge of foreclosure their rates were too high their rates were ballooning and because of housing counseling and legal services going way beyond what we could do as individual elected officials their homes were saved we have dozens and dozens of stories we've heard in new york all of our funding for those programs housing counseling and legal services was set to zero out on april first of this year because of what we obtained in the settlement we were able to preserve those programs and to provide a guarantee that they're out of the budget wars at our state capital they're preserved and expanded for the next three years but the most important thing about the settlement that was entered into uh, frankly was the narrowing of the releases what was not in it and I realized as I was undertaking the investigation um, uh, that there was a lot of work to do there were a large number of institutions with millions of records I committed everyone I could spare in my office to doing it I've been working on it personally but we really needed uh, we needed a collaborative effort with the federal government and the coordination of resources that was necessary uh, will hopefully be provided and is on the way to being provided by the joint working group that the president announced in his State of the Union speech. The uh, Department of Justice, the SEC, the U.S. Attorney's offices around the country, uh, my office and some other state attorneys general, the new Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, Department of Housing and Urban Development and others are all united in this joint working group. Uh, uh, people are being deployed from central DOJ to U.S. Attorney's offices, over 50 people already, more on the way. And uh, I urge you to join with me in uh, thanking the President for going forward and in urging him that we need to staff up as quickly and as fully as possible to give the people of the United States the full investigation into the misconduct that caused the crash of the economy that they are demanding and that they deserve. So for me, I have three goals for our investigative work. The first is accountability. We cannot say that we respect the idea there's one set of rules for everyone if people are too big and powerful to be held accountable. The second is more relief for homeowners. Uh, whatever cases we're able to bring, whatever future settlements we're able to negotiate, um, we need more uh, of what we more of what we got a, a, a bit of in this first settlement. It's going to save. Uh, a lot of people's homes, we need to save a lot more. And the third goal, in which the members of the Progressive Caucus have already been really sort of uh, doing the hard work, is to get everything out in the open so we make sure this never happens again. Um, I have expressed to many of you already my astonishment that after this uh, reckless period of deregulation in the last decade, um, and I'm going to go through some of the details, uh, People were trying to rewrite history as soon as the crash happened to say that, you know, uh, the, the problem was some of these government programs that are designed to help working people, and in fact that the problem was too much spending. Uh, local and state governments have had fiscal crises as a result of the crash and the recession. Tax revenues have collapsed. But the people out there are saying this problem is a spending problem. We have deficits because we spend too much money on police or teachers or firefighters are trying to rewrite history. Uh, I cannot go into detail about anything in a law enforcement investigation, but I assure you we've encountered no evidence that teachers or cops or firefighters contributed to the blowing up of the American economy in 2007. That was a different set of professionals that I'd like to discuss. Um, this is not something that is shrouded in secrecy. The deregulatory history that led to the crash is essentially uncontested. Um, it's well known that the Glass-Steagall Act separating commercial banks from investment banks was repealed. Uh, the refusal to regulate derivatives uh, in 1999 that was enshrined in the Commodities Futures Modernization Act of 2000 uh, was a, a critical misstep in leading to the crisis. In November 2001, federal bank regulators actually changed their risk rating system for mortgage-backed securities and uh, they required banks to set aside less capital than they had previously been required to in the event of widespread defaults. And at the same time, um, at the same time, the stage was set for this wave of defaults um, by a decline in lending standards. And it's very clear that this took place in the years between 2003 and 2005, when the, more, the housing market was starting to cool. Instead of allowing it to cool, 
they kept the volume of mortgages flowing by just reducing their lending standards. The number of interest only and negative amortization loans went from about 6% of the market in 2003 to about 30% of the market in 2006. And during that same period, um, when states were trying to get subprime lenders more heavily regulated and pass laws against subprime lending, um, the controller of the currency in February 2004 actually exempted national banks from state laws regulating mortgage credit, including state anti-predatory lending laws. So this is what led to a situation in which people were free to engage in the kind of reckless conduct uh, that brought down the economy. It is not uh, because of overspending. It is not because of too much regulation. We know what the facts are. Some of this conduct uh, may have been illegal, and we have the joint working group with uh, uh, many lawyers, forensic accountants, auditors working on it already. I look forward to many more. I would urge you to uh, provide all, all support, encouragement, um, and uh, other, other forms of uh, uh, stimulation to the full staffing and the full prosecution of all of these investigations as quickly as possible. There are a lot of people in this town working on it already because it's a law enforcement exercise. They're not really able to talk about it as it goes on, but there are lawyers from my office here uh, today, actually, at the SEC working on one of the investigations that's going forward. The, uh, the three goals of the investigation uh, require uh, the same coalition that brought this issue to national attention, that led to uh, this creation of this new working group, that led to the narrowing of the releases in the settlement. This is not because of any one of us. It certainly is not because uh, my advocacy got better. I, if anything, I probably just got more shrill. But this became more of a national uh, movement last fall. And when people stood up and said they want accountability, they want one set of rules for everyone, we have to give credit to those who are able to listen. Um, I respectfully request that uh, you are the critical people to stand up to those who would rewrite history. Uh, your advocacy and your standing up in the face of uh, some of the most uh, amazing demagoguery I've ever seen. And I'm, you know, I've seen a lot, but the stuff that's going on these days, uh, that's the expression, no matter how cynical you are, it's hard to keep up. Uh, I do need you to continue to support uh, our efforts to make sure the working group can do its job fully and quickly. I do need you to encourage your own attorneys general to get involved and to take whatever steps you can to see that the states spend the money for what it's in for the purposes that it was intended for. There are some problems with states spending it on something other than homeowner relief, and, and that's something that uh, would be, it's not in my state, but it would be of a concern to me if it was. And of course, some of the regulatory problems I've mentioned, the deregulation, the fight now over the rulemaking of Dodd-Frank is critically important for us to have the markets as safe as we deserve. There was one period in the history of the world since the creation of the markets back in Europe in the 1600s, that markets didn't crash every 10 or 20 years. That was between 1929 and 1987. When we had a strong set of regulations, we had institutions in place that were empowered to make sure that people could make money, maybe not quite as fast and flamboyantly as they liked, but the economy grew steadily, the distribution of wealth was more equitable, and it wasn't until the so-called Reagan Revolution, when these sort of supply-side theories came back into currency and they started to dismantle that set of regulations that the market crashed again in 87 and crashed again harder in 2007. So I appreciate your support for my efforts. As in my view, we're in this together. Uh, I want to do as much as fast as I can, but this is going to be a thorough investigation. Everyone has to be held accountable. All the facts have to be aired out, and the homeowners across the country deserve and need more relief than they've gotten so far, and I'm committed to that effort with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. Um, uh, because of the uh, uh, General Snyderman uh, has a firm deadline of about 3 o'clock, I'm going to have to ask members to hold their comments to about a minute. And I ask that so that everyone can get a chance uh, to ask at least one or two questions. Uh, so. Um, I, I'll waive my own questions because I had an ample time to talk with the uh, General Snyderman earlier. And so the first person up is uh, 
Chairman Bell. Let me defer to, to the other members, if I may, Mr. Ellison, let them ask their question. Uh, Chairman Nevitt. Thank you. I'll just ask one very uh, sick, uh, simple question. Um, given, and, and, and if this is not terribly relevant to your investigation, just to say that, uh, given uh, the the the, the um, 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 actions of MERS, the mortgage, whatever the electronic recording, recording system, which evaded uh, county and state and city recording uh, statutes, um, it it would appear that they, it also evaded a heck of a lot of state and city and local mortgage recording and other taxes. Um, do you have any estimate as to how much may have been evaded and what we can do to get that to recover that for the taxpayers? Well, that's that's a very important point because this entire enterprise of all the fast-moving loans would not have been possible without the MERS system, this electronic mortgage system, so that uh, they really took uh, mortgage recording out of the county clerks and recorder of deeds offices across America. You can go and look at a file. All it says is that MERS holds the mortgage. It may be transferred back and forth among MERS members, uh, go from one bank to another, and you have no way to tell. This was upheld. This was really a matter of, of state law. It was, up, uh, it was held to be legal by the New York State Court of Appeals for them to record things that way. I think uh, this is a decision that we're going to be looking at carefully, and we hope we'll get reconsideration. But one set of claims that were explicitly carved out that the banks really wanted to get in this settlement, but they did not get, were claims against MERS. The MERS system is fair game. I have a case against MERS and some of the banks that are, were, are members of and sponsors of MERS. Delaware has a case. Massachusetts has had a case. There are states bringing actions. But this is, uh, uh, again, this is one of those moves where the disregard for the public system of recording deeds, the traditional system of recording pop property that uh, lasted for hundreds of years, uh, was undermined by this notion that everything is better off if it's done through privatization and the group of banks can create their own electronic mortgage registry and pass things around. Those cases are going forward. I don't have an estimate of, of how much tax revenue is lost, but it certainly is billions of dollars nationwide. Do you think there's any prospect of recovering much of that? Uh, it's, it's very hard to say. In our state, uh, they're going to argue that the Court of Appeals said it's okay to do this, which they did. I'm hoping they'll reconsider that in light of the actual evidence of how MERS worked. Uh, our allegations and our complaint, again, we're proceeding with it as a responsible investigation, but our allegations are that we don't believe that they kept accurate records of the system. We don't believe that uh, people were properly informed about what their rights were, and that, frankly, the, the opportunity to go and find out who holds your mortgage to renegotiate it if you need to not, if you want to try, uh, was denied to many people. So we're, we have a, a uh, very broad-reaching investigation into this, as do quite a few other states. And we are encouraging, with the joint working group, one of the things that's happening is we have uh, my office working with our other counterparts, particularly the folks from the Department of Justice and the Securities and Exchange Commission. We are meeting with and making information available to other state attorneys general. I have uh, been in contact with quite a few of them myself. And my hope is that the MERS system, which is really a state law issue, uh, that there will be cases all over America about this before we're done. Thank you. Well, Waters, Schakowsky, Wilson. Oh. I'm just picking out an order of appearance. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, your presence here today, um, Mr. Snyderman. And uh, I um, am concerned about the, uh, the size of the task that you have before you. It is huge. Uh, I have been around long enough to have witnessed RTC and uh, the resources that they had uh, to deal with that uh, SNL crisis that was generated. So I want to know if you think you have enough resources dedicated to this huge task to be able to do the job that's expected of you. Um, uh, thank you, Congressman. We don't have the resources yet. The, the uh, operation just got set up really in the last 60 days or so. Uh, there. Are, they have posted for jobs, they are hiring people, they're detailing people, they are uh, entering into contracts with contractors for auditing and uh, financial analysis. We have, uh, there's over, there are over 50 new people, I'm not counting folks like the 15 people in my office who are already working on this, 
that have been deployed on this. Is it enough? Not yet. Do I believe that we're going to get there? Yes. Would I welcome your support and encouragement for people to be deployed as quickly as possible on this task? Absolutely. You have about 55 investigators. I think you need about 100 of them. Uh, I, I think at the end of the day we're going to have more than that. I, I, I do believe uh, that there are going to be some announcements in the course of the next week or two about, about staffing. Um, but listen, uh, I'm, Jerry and I are from Manhattan. Nothing happens fast enough for me. And I'm a very, I, I've got some virtues. Patience is not one of them. I want to staff up as fully as possible. You're right about the magnitude of the task. We have massive institutions with hundreds of lawyers and millions of documents uh, that you can bury uh, key facts in. Um, I want this done right. One of the most important steps that we've been taking in co collaboration with our federal colleagues is to try and get agreements to toll the statute of limitations on as many of these institutions as we can so that we do have the time to do this and we've been pretty successful thus far. I cannot tell you what a difference it's made to us for me and my 15 lawyers looking at this huge mountain a year ago to having the commitment, the public commitment from the president, the commitment from the attorney general, and uh, to watch this uh, process that to me may be a little bit uh, slower than I would like, but there are massive resources being moved to this, and I encourage all of the support for, and uh, listen, if you want to help me badger everybody, that's good. I'm a good badgerer by myself, but I, I know there are some experts in this room. We'll help you. So we, we have uh, Shizkowski, Woolsey, Jackson, Lee, Henchy, and Clark. Uh, with respect, General uh, Snyderman, I, I see you got to go in just a moment. If we could simply ask each member to ask a question in a serial fashion, and then... Uh, like a speed round. Kind of a speed round, because it is very important that all members get a chance to, to at least ask one question. So Shikowski, Woolsey, Jackson, Lee, Hinch, and Clark. A quarter of all the homes in my district are underwater, um, and they have been victims of what may be the greatest financial crime in the history of the world, or at least misconduct. You're going to decide whether, I mean, bringing, virtually almost bringing down the whole economy. I think what people want to know, you know, there are people in jail for stealing a, a loaf of bread. In your, in your view, is someone, are there going to be people who actually go to jail? for perpetrating these, uh, these acts? That's my question. Well, it, when you're prosecuting or investigating, uh, it's important not to appear to have prejudged. Um, so I can't say. I certainly am of the view that uh, there are three categories of conduct uh, at issue. One is the stuff that was made legal by this reckless deregulation that should never have been legal. The second is uh, conduct that is, in fact, criminal. And in that case, one of the co-chairs of our working group is the head of the criminal division of the Justice Department, and his people do nothing but criminal work. So any notion that, the, that criminal prosecutions have been taken off the table is, is simply wrong. And then there are folks when you can't meet the burden of proof in a criminal case. We nonetheless have a lot of uh, really uh, very aggressive civil statutes uh, in New York, the Martin Act, our securities law, is actually, uh, in some respects, more powerful than the federal law. And combining the jurisdiction of the states, the jurisdiction of all these federal agencies, I think we have the best shot we've ever had. Certainly, the lay of the land is much different than it was a year ago. And uh, uh, I look forward to pursuing all of this as aggressively as we can. I do think that there is going to be misconduct in both of the categories that we, I described, as well as you know a lot of civil liability. That's also when you establish the civil liability is where you get the relief for the homeowners. It's one a lot of people are focused on Stadler, punishment, but I also want to keep our eye on the homeowners. General Stadler, we, we only have four more questioners. If, if, yeah, I know you yes, got to go. No, I'm, all right. I'm, I'm, I'll talk faster. Okay. <laughs> well, well, what, what, if, what if they all got their questions out, and then maybe you could okay. respond in serial? So Woolsey, Jackson, Lee, Hinchy, and Clark. Okay. I'm proud to brag that I voted against Last steagle I knew it was wrong then, and I know it was, it's still wrong, and it's caused so much trouble. My question to you is, you must have been frustrated uh, along the way here over these years. What has taken so long for us to step up to this and do something about it, and what will happen to those who have already lost their homes? Um, so, so, okay, next question. Yes. So, so that's one question. Maybe somebody can keep track of that one okay. for the General Steinerman. 
Jackson Lee. Thank question. you very much, Mr. General. There are firefighters in this room from all over. I, I um, uh, know that they're here, and I will tell you that there are firefighters, who, public servants, who had their homes foreclosed on. As I was driving here, I got a call from my district. Can I help someone who's about to foreclose by May 1st? My, my question is the question of outreach. Can you say so that it can be heard, that, is this a 50-state um, settlement? What do people do in states like Texas to find out have they had an infrastructure set up? Are there lawyers working in our Attorney General's office? Where is their money? Can you just tell us how they would proceed? Sure. sure. Oh, next question. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks. So, gonna, so if you could hang on to that question. Perhaps if somebody from staff can help uh, General Snyderman with that, with keeping track of all these questions. Uh, uh, Congressman Hinchy? And I'm, I'm not going to ask a specific question, but I just want to just... Uh, express my deep appreciation to you because I know that any questions that I might have, we're going to be able to contact each other very, very closely and to deal with that. I have a deep, deep appreciation of you and, uh, and respect for you and everything that you're doing. The state of uh, New York is benefiting enormously from you and the way in which you are conducting this set of circumstances. So for all of those things, I just want to say thank you very, very much, and uh, express my deep appreciation for you, and we will continue to be in touch. Thank you so very much. And uh, Congressman Clark will have the last question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Attorney General Schneiderman, I, I just wanted to get at the heart of the fact that uh, banks still seem reluctant to, um, to do loan mod modifications for uh, those who are trending towards foreclosure uh, and eviction and risking uh, the blight of many communities across this nation um, and adversely impacting on the property values of adjacent communities, further driving down property values. So it just seems there's a cyclical challenge as well involved here, not to mention the fact that these banks don't typically take care of the properties that they have. Uh, what would you say that this settlement can do to really mitigate and hopefully uh, stop the, this uh, trend, which is, which is happening faster than we're able to get through this particular hearing today. And, and then finally, uh, the remedies that are in place for individuals who are underwater due to stagnant wages and job losses and are facing real prospects of just simply being unable to avoid foreclosure. What is being done to work with them? Okay. So, uh, 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 let me try and address these all quickly. The, uh, as to what has taken so long, I, I don't know. I got into office a little over a year ago, uh, started looking into this, became convinced that further investigation was needed. Uh, I never really expected for uh, what happened, but I am pleased by the work of the great, you know, the many, many organizations and people and uh, unions and other folks who got involved in this and members of your caucus in encouraging uh, the administration to put more resources into this, which they have done, and encouraging my colleagues to narrow the releases so that we could go after things like MERS, go after securities fraud, and uh, we're now moving forward. I think it's important uh, not just to say, well, you know, things should have happened earlier. We have to throw ourselves into getting everything done as quickly as possible and as aggressively as possible with what we've got now. Uh, I, uh, you know, I leave that to the historians. I, I've been uh, uh, working, we're, my office is fully committed to going after this, and as, as Congressman Clark pointed out, uh, you know the banks are uh, uh, are sometimes act against what I believe is in their own self-interest. You know, because sometimes you're better off writing down a loan and having a two hundred thousand dollar mortgage that's performing than a two hundred fifty thousand dollar loan that's always on the edge of default. Um, we have taken that into account, and the first we're really talking about two separate things. The first settlement. Um, Congress member, is just is a down payment. If this was the end of the day and this is all the relief we got, I would say this is not a success. This is a down payment on bigger relief that should come as a result of the other investigations we're undertaking. The, uh, as, a, as we discussed earlier, there is a national monitor, Joe Smith, distinguished former banking commissioner of North Carolina, who has a staff to monitor the banks as a backstop to the state AGs who are supposed to be taking primary responsibility for the outreach in their own states. Each state has different laws and different structures. Um, my office has set up a network in New York. 
Uh, I don't know exactly what's going on in Texas, but if, if there's any doubt that banks are not fulfilling their obligations under the agreement, which does include forbearance for people who are unemployed, principal reduction in some cases, rate revisions in other cases where you have balloon mortgages, then Mr. Smith's office should be uh, a backstop. The other folks who really do know a lot about this are uh, our colleagues at Housing and Urban Development who really were the architects of a lot of these incremental programs that are, are chipping away at the problem. Perhaps we need, we need more there too, but uh, the HUD people in, in your district probably can help you out. The Secretary has been very, uh, a very aggressive part of, of pursuing the banks on this. And the, uh, 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 I have to say that the, uh, finally, uh, Congressman Hinchy, I, I, uh, the highest compliment that I ever heard about you when you were in the, back when you were in the state legislature is he lives up in this conservative area, but he votes like Nadler. So uh, <laughs> I, I thank you for your many years of, of service, and, and I thank you all. F it's really an honor to be That's here with you and, and to be associated with a political movement that you lead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And with uh, all of our thanks and the thanks of the Progressive Caucus, uh, General Snyderman, you have some friends who want to push the ball forward with you, so uh, thank you for coming, and, and best of luck, and we'll stay in touch. Thank you. We'd ask our second panel to, uh, to come up to the...